Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today's video, we're going to make a pencil case. It's going to be a nice and stiff one, and I'm going to make it with quilting cotton. We'll use a nice heavy uh, stabilizer as well. Previously, when we've done tapered bags, I've actually tapered it so that it's wider from the top and then tapers down at the base. This time around, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to have it tapering that way, so it'll be narrower at the top. It'll have a zipper on the top and it'll sit nice and flat and it'll be cute. Let's go make this. Here's everything we need. I have an eight inch zip. You can use a regular zip or a continuous zip like these ones here. It's going to be eight inches. If you're using a continuous zip, make sure you've got your slide in place at this point. I have a 14 by three inch strip of fabric, which is the outer color. I have two pieces at two and a half inches by one and a half inches. They will be the tab ends for the zip. Then the outer bag, I've got 12 inches by five and a half inches. We want two of those and we want two pieces for the lining at 12 inches by five and a half inches. And then we want two pieces of stabilizer. The one I'm using today is Decaville. It's a good sturdy weight uh, stabilizer and it'll be great for things like pencil cases because it'll just make that a little bit more sturdy when you've got scissors and pencils and compasses and things like that poking out. So I've already gone and fused the Decaville onto the main part of my fabric. We can go and shape this now and we'll also get our zip organized and our little strap. We'll set this aside with our 14 by three inch piece of fabric. You don't have to stabilize this. It's only going to be a little wristlet strap fold it in half with the raw edges together and then fold that in half again and we'll take this to the machine and we're going to sew down both long edges. We'll set that aside for the minute. We'll go and do these next steps together at the machine. For the zip, take your tab and we'll fold that in half with the right sides facing and place the right side over the end of the zip and repeat that for the other side and just remember to make sure you've got your zipper slider on there and we can set that to the side and now we can prepare these pieces of fabric for the bag. I'll just take one piece for the time being and I'm just going to have it wrong side faced up so that you can see what I'm actually doing. This is the top of our bag. From the top, we're going to taper this, but we're actually going to taper this in the opposite direction to the previous bags we've been doing. So at the top edge, mark one and a half inches on each side. Then you can grab your fabric, place that right side together. And if your layers aren't too thick and your cutter is nice and sharp, you can place all of your layers together. So I've got my lining and my main, place them all directly over the top so that they're perfectly aligned. From this bottom corner here up to that mark that we've made, I'm going to make a cut and I'll do the same from this corner to there. When you're using a rotary cutter and ruler, it's always safer to cut away from you, never toward you. So it's much better to turn your work around. Okay, that is the shape of our bag. We need to put our zip on, but before we can do that, I have to put the tabs on. I'm just going to quickly take this to the machine and sew these tabs on the edge, and then we'll come back and put that onto our bag. I've sewn the tabs onto the end. When you've done that, all you need to do is push out the fabric and there is a really nice finished tab. The raw edges here won't be seen. They'll be hidden away in the seam allowance later. And so will these edges here. I've trimmed the side edges of my tabs so that they're in line with the zip. What I've also done here, I folded the zip in half and I found the midpoint. So I folded it in half from the edge of the tabs here, line it up at the tabs and then find the center point and make a mark on the zip. With your main fabric and your lining fabric, you want to find the center point on the short edge of your taper. Once you've cut your angles, this is nine inches across and you want to find the middle, which is four and a half inches. So I've made a mark at four and a half inches on both of those. And I've also made a mark at four and a half inches on the top edge of my lining fabric. Now, 
stabilizers I've said in many videos that's your own personal choice I'm using a quilting cotton here it needs some stability whether you use Palin or Decaville or Paltex depends on how stiff you want your product to be if you're using upholstery fabric I wouldn't use anything now I like my zips to open from left to right so we want the curved edge of our zip slider to be facing our left now we're going to turn our zip upside down and place that center mark over the center mark we've got here and you can pin or clip it in place or if you like you can use that double-sided tape that I really love to use today I'll clip it make sure the tabs are pointing out they're what are going to give you a really nice neat corner after then we can take our lining piece and place that directly over the top and you want that center over the center marking on the zip and line that up to the end and just make sure the edges of the fabric are going to line up there and I do want the tab sticking out at the end okay take that to the machine and put your zip foot on and sew that all the way along then we'll come back and do the other side when you get to the bulk in the zip just move the slide out of the way once that's in place we can now repeat that process on the other side of the zip using the Decaville this is actually going to be very stiff on the other side I might just put a couple of clips on the side just to hold that down take your other piece and we'll place the other side of our zip directly over the top matching up the center markings and clip it all the way to each end take your other lining and we'll line that up over the center again as well now I'll take this back to the machine and sew that side of the zip down once I've done that I'm going to open it out and have the lining spread out as well then we can go and top stitch both edges beside the zip and we'll also sew both sides of our handle strap down when you go and top stitch we only want to stitch from this edge of the zip to this side there's no need to sew where the tabs are here by eliminating any stitches on this side here means we're going to reduce some of that bulk that we have from the lining and the folds in the fabric and it'll be easier and neater when we close up the side edges so just top stitch where the zipper tape is and once again move the slider out of the way when you get to it close up the opening on the strap just stitch really close to the edge and then we'll do the other side as well you don't need to worry about the raw edges on the top and bottom and we'll repeat for the other side let's do our top stitching open out your fabric and spread the lining apart and open out the main fabric as well and you just want to make sure everything is sitting nice and flat because we want to secure the back of the lining to the front of the bag and remember I said to sew in between the area where the zip ends not beyond it and we just want to stitch close to about an eighth of an inch from the edge when the zip is in the way just move that out of the way and when you get to the tab back stitch so that's got that nice and secure repeat for the other side okay our top stitching is done in between the tabs there on both sides we're now ready to start closing this up and putting our strap on take your strap or your handle fold that in half and place it over the top with the raw edges sticking out just along here and we'll put that about three quarters of an inch down from this seam line here I'll just quickly go and stitch that in place and when I stitch this in place I want to sew it with the lining away so all I'm doing is sewing this handle onto the front of the bag so there's our little wristlet and if you prefer not to have that at all and you just want to have a tab 
make this a two and a half inch strip of fabric, process it exactly the same way, but you'll just have a small tab sticking out on the side. Take your main fabric and place those right side together and line them up. <laughs> okay, I nearly did it. I almost forgot to close my zip. There's a couple of people that watch my videos and I know they're yelling in the background. So I heard you loud and clearly. Before you go to the next step, open up your zip at least part of the way. You don't have to open it all of the way because I find the slider gets in the way. It's easy enough to open once you've got it partially open, but you need to have some opening there. I nearly got caught. Let's go back and clip this together. When I line up the side seam, I want to make sure the section where the zip is, is perfectly aligned. So these folds in here, you want those to line up right at the very top there, and then you can pin or clip that in place. We can trim this excess off later and it's more important to line up this section where the zip is than it is the bottom. So if your bottom is slightly out, that's fine. We're going to box the corners anyway, but this section here will be noticeable if you don't line them up properly first. Let's take it to the machine now. Backstitch here, sew all the way around and backstitch here. When I come to this section here, I'll triple stitch over there because there's a lot happening there. I'll go forward, back and forward again. And make sure you don't have any zipper ends in the way there at all. You shouldn't have if your tabs are long enough. And you can also see when we did the top stitching, we top stitched only on the tab of the zip. This section here wasn't done. So it'll actually make it a lot easier for the machine to sew over all of this bulk here. And that's what gives us nicer corners. Now I know I said to start on the lining. I actually like to start on the side where the zip is. That way I know that I'm going to have everything lined up properly. And it just means that I can stitch over that section again as well. I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I've got that tab for the handle there. I'll over sew that a couple of times as well. And because I've come up on an angle, we just want to turn the angle and continue on with your quarter of an inch seam on your lining. I'm going to leave an opening of about four inches. Come back to the side where the zip is, over sew that and continue that taper on the lining. Okay, that's all secured. And if you feel as though you need to go and do the edges again, you can go and do that at this point. With all the side seams done and the opening here ready for turning through later we're now going to box the corners and you may have noticed i've changed fabric i finished making this little pouch i've edited the video and discovered i was missing this bit so take off any excess fabric that we don't need just the zipper tabs and any excess from the wristlet and we're going to box the corners but we're actually going to do this at the machine today instead of cutting it out on the angle here so just put your hand in at the opening, come down to the main bag, open that out and we're going to fold this seam to one side and the seam on the other side will go to the other. So the seam at the back there wants to go to my left, the one facing me wants to go to my right. To ensure that you've lined up this seam and this seam so that we can get really nice boxed corners, all you need to do is grab a pin and pop that in on the stitching line push it all the way through the layers and have that come through the other side. And you can see that that's come through. You may not see it, but I can. It's come through on the stitching line. So I know that my boxing is going to be nice and even. I want to have about an inch and a half across from the left to my right. So just line up your ruler until you've got an inch and a half there. And I'll just mark a line going straight across. And that will be my stitching line for my boxed corners. I'll do all four of them. Then I'll take them to the machine, sew them all up. And once they're done, I can then trim off the corners. 
I'll make sure that's trained over to my left. Because a Decaville is so stiff, you really want to press that firmly. And the seam underneath or behind it goes to the opposite side. And again, if you can't feel it just by wiggling the seams, then grab your pin and just pierce it all the way through so that you can see that those stitching lines match up. And we'll do the same on the lining. The lining will be much easier because there's no uh, stabilizer there. I'll take this to the machine now and we're going to stitch all four corners. Okay, we've done all of our corners. We can trim the excess off. And because this one is such a stiff product here, I really want to just press this seam down so that it sits to one side. Then I can turn everything the right way around. Make sure your zip is fully open at this point. And once you've got that turned the right way around, push out all the edges, make sure everything's nice and even. And the bottom seam here, you just want to push that really well to the one side where the zip end is. You can take that and push that out as well. So you can just stick your thumb in on the corner there and where the tabs are here, just stick your thumb in and you can see that that's got a nice rounded edge to it. And repeat for this side. And once you're happy with that, we'll take our lining and just fold the edges together here. And we'll take this to the machine. And from here to here, we're going to do a very narrow stitch right on the very edge of the fabric that will close up that opening. I'll just quickly go and do that by machine now. Okay, I have sewn this closed along the bottom edge there, just very close to the seam. Pop that inside. We're completely finished now. This could do with a bit of an iron, so I might go and do that later. And there we have it, a triangle zippered pouch. A perfect size for pens, pencils, cosmetics, and you've got a nice little boxed edge on the bottom there so your bag will sit nicely as well and with a little wristlet strap you can carry that easily. Turns out this is so cute that Chris actually wants one for his tools so he actually has to bring home his little micro toolkit all the time. He's got these tiny little screwdrivers. He loves how rigid this uh, pencil case is so I have to make him one in more masculine colours. Anyway I enjoyed this. It's a good little project, very versatile. It's got a nice little wristlet strap on the side there and you can just swing it around to your heart's content. It'll be a great little toiletry bag, perfect for kids for school for their pencils or even any budding artists. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.